Hello students, welcome to our English. I wish you all have a good time as well as a maximum benefit. I am so excited to share a lesson today with you because we are going to tell a story in English. But before starting our main lesson, I have some questions for you. Do you tell stories? Do you tell jokes? Maybe you tell long stories or you may tell short stories about different situations. Let's start to see the video how to tell the stories in English. How to tell a story in English. Are you ready? Well then, let's jump right in. The first step to telling a story in English is to decide the basic story. In other words, come up with a basic idea of what you want to talk about. For our example, the basic story is about a young man who traveled around the world with his friends. The second step to telling a story in English is to decide the background. In other words, figure out where the story will take place. For our example, the background is Paris. The third step to telling a story in English is to decide the characters. In other words, deciding who will be the focus of your story. For our example, the characters are John, his friends, and the taxi driver they met in Paris. The fourth step to telling a story in English is to decide the climax. In other words, you need to come up with an event or a situation that will get the attention of the one listening to you. For our example, the climax is a car accident in the middle of the night. The fifth step to telling a story in English is to decide the conclusion. In other words, you need to figure out what the ending of your story will be. For our example, the conclusion is no money, but they made lots of friends. The sixth and final step to telling a story in English is to decide the lesson learned. In other words, you need to determine what lesson or lessons you want to teach people through your story. For our example, the lesson learned is always do the right thing and good things will happen. Here's the story. Last year, John and his friends decided to take a trip around the world. They visited tons of countries, but one of their favorite places was Paris. It was beautiful. They loved all of the museums and the people, but one night something happened that they would never forget. After a night of hanging out, they were driving along a dark road. Then suddenly, they slammed into the back of a taxi. For a moment, they thought about speeding off, but then they saw that the driver had been hurt. So, instead, they decided to stay and take responsibility for what they had done. They called for help and took the taxi driver to the hospital. Then they paid for his entire medical bill. A few days later, after the taxi driver had recovered, he thanked them over and over again for not leaving him on the side of the road. He introduced them to his family, and they all spent a wonderful time together. So, even though the young men had no more money, they did have some new friends. Now, it's your turn. When we tell a story in English, we use past tenses. So now, I would like you to pay attention into narrative tenses in English. Narrative tenses are verb tenses that are used to talk about the past. You can often find them in stories, textbooks, spoken accounts and in descriptions of past events. Therefore, it's very important to know the past verb forms and use them correctly. When we narrate, we use the past simple tense, the past continuous tense, the past perfect and the past perfect continuous tense. We use these tenses to describe events that happened in the past and for telling stories. Now let's see the following paragraph and think to yourself whether you can identify the verb forms 
in the paragraph. I was walking down the street to the shops. I hadn't been walking for very long when it started to pour down. I had forgotten to bring my umbrella, so I got drenched. Let's see. Was walking, it is past continuous. Hadn't been walking, past perfect continuous. Started, past simple. Had forgotten, past perfect simple. Got, past simple. So let's see the narrative sentences using these tenses. We can talk about the past with different tenses. Nina bought lovely flowers for her mother last weekend. Kate was walking down the street this morning when a tramp came up to her and begged for money. When I arrived at the cinema, the movie had already started. I arrived home late and realized my son had been playing on the computer for hours. Can you identify the situations where we use each of these tenses? Can you decide when and why different tenses are used? Can you remember the name of each verb, tense? Let's see all the narrative sentences in details and make some clarification. Nina bought lovely flowers for her mother last weekend. It is a completed action with specific time in the past. We use the past simple to indicate exactly when an action or event took place in the past. Which time expressions can we use with the past simple? Yesterday, last year, at 7 o'clock, two years ago, in December, in 1997, on Monday. The next narrative sentence here. Kate was walking down the street this morning when a tramp came up to her and begged for money. We use past continuous when something was happening at specific time in the past, when something else happened and interrupted the first action. The emphasis is on the duration of the activity in the past. The past continuous is often used with a simple past to show that one action was in progress when another action occurred. Which time expressions can we use with the past continuous? At the moment, at that time, while, during, when, at 10 o'clock yesterday morning. Let's look at the next example. When I arrived at the cinema, the movie had already started. Past perfect tense describes completed events that took place in the past before another past event. We use it to make more interesting and easy to read. It is a completed action before another action in the past. The older action is always the one in the past perfect. We tend to use the following time expressions with the past perfect. Already, never, just, by the time, after, before, until, until then. Let's go to the next narrative sentence. I arrived home late and realized my son had been playing on the computer for hours. The period of time during which my son had been playing before I arrived matters. This tense is used to emphasize the duration of an action that was completed before another action or event in the past. We tend to use the following time expression with the past perfect continuous. For, since, how long, by the time, when, before, we can also talk about our past habits with used to and would. Here is the conversation. 
I used to travel with my parents. Do you travel with your parents now? What would you do on those trips? Used to describes past actions and habits. When we use used to, we suggest that the action is no longer true and so make a strong contrast with the present. Would is used to describe person's typical activities in the past. It can only be used to describe repeated actions, not states. Now it's time to practice. Please open the brackets and put the correct narrative tense. You will have 10 seconds to think. Last quarter, the report showed the increase of the profit by 5.9%. At that period of time, we all were applying for any position in the oil processing sphere. I felt really discouraged because by the March, we had been advertising for the technical specialist for more than two and a half months already. During the whole meeting, I was listening to my Turkish colleagues trying to understand the message, but failed, unfortunately. The doctor took off the plaster that he had put on six weeks before. In the past, our Asian branches purchased up to 70% of the spare parts from the local suppliers. Before the unexpected snowfall, I had changed the tires for the summer once. Frank Tenetra caught the flu because he had been singing in the rain too long. Now it's time to watch video. But before watching a video, I have a task for you. Please watch the story. Notice the different forms of the verbs being used. Try to remember and repeat to yourself. Last night I was walking home next to the River Thames when something strange happened to me. It was late at night and I had had a long and difficult day at work. There was a large full moon in the sky and everything was quiet. I was tired and lonely and I'd just had a few pints of beer in my local pub so I decided to stop by the riverside and look at the moon for a while. I sat on some steps 
very close to the water's edge and looked up at the big yellow moon and wondered if it really was made of cheese. I felt very tired, so I closed my eyes and after a few minutes, I fell asleep. When I woke up, the moon had moved behind a cloud and it was very dark and cold. The wind was blowing and an owl hooted in a tree above me. I rubbed my eyes and started to get up when suddenly I heard a splash. I looked down at the water and saw something, something terrible and frightening and unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Something was coming out of the water and moving towards me. Something green and strange and ugly. It was a long green arm and it was stretching out from the water to grab my leg. I was so scared that I couldn't move. I'd never been so scared in my whole life. The cold green hand was moving closer and closer when suddenly there was a blue flash and a strange noise from behind me. Someone jumped onto the stairs next to me. He was wearing strange clothes and he had a crazy look in his eyes. He shouted, get back, and pointed something at the monster in the water. There was a bright flash and the monster hissed and disappeared. I looked up at the man. He looked strange, but kind. Don't fall asleep by the river when there's a full moon, he said. The moon goblins will get you. I'd never heard of moon goblins before. I didn't know what to do. Who, who are you? I asked him. You can call me the doctor, he said. I was trying to think of something else to say when he turned around and said, watch the stars at night and be careful of the full moon. I was trying to understand what he meant when there was another blue flash and I closed my eyes. When I opened them again, he had gone. I couldn't believe what had happened. What on earth were moon goblins? And who was the mysterious doctor? And why had he saved me? I was determined to find the answers to these strange questions. I stood up, looked at the moon, and quickly walked home. Dear students, that's all for now. We have discussed about narrative tenses in English in order to tell the stories. I hope you have enjoyed our lesson and got benefit. Thank you for watching and all the best with your English.